guys and welcome back to all things nail so in light of everything going on in this video about this teacher hitting this student the comments have been all over the place and i have been reading so many comments on facebook and i and think what gets me is the about the comments is people are so quick to condemn this teacher and not look at the whole bigger picture. They want to go on about how the teacher was wrong and the teacher should have did this and the teacher should have did that. Let me point something out. The students that witnessed this situation, as well as the parents, are supporting this teacher. So that all to wake you up and let you know there is more to this story. So while people are running around talking about, he could have did this, he shouldn't have did this, and he shouldn't have did that, and I would have beat him up. And I, if I was his parents, I would have went and done this, that, and the other. You need to stop, pay, number one, pay attention to the video. Watch it to his, in its entirety. Find out about the situation before you... My thing um, about it is, people need to wake up and realize... This is not 1980. This is not 1990. How children are raised now is completely different. You can no longer say, oh, I, when I send my kids to school, I expect for them to be safe and taken care of. And I, I shouldn't have to worry about a teacher hitting. You shouldn't. You <laughs> Times are different now. We have been past that for like the last 10 or 20 years. I cannot tell you how many different sporting events I've been at. And it's a group of kids that's been around like, it'll be some kind of school administration not bothering anybody, not doing anything to anybody. All he doing is simply um, patrolling the, perim the perimeters um, of whether it's a gym or a uh, football event field, whatever. And there's a group of students that are talking about, there go Mr. So-and-so. Look at his bitch ass. I, if he says something about me over here cussing, if he says something about me over here uh, doing such and such, such and such, I'm going to punch him in his face. Why don't I punch him in his face? Watch me. Watch me. Dare me do it. Watch me. Watch me. I'm going to do it. This man, and, and, and I've seen this happen, and then that person don't even know this kid up here already plotted. Hang touched him. Don't know nothing about them. They already started stuff. I have sit and watched kids try to make it be a situation when it's not a situation. They will purposely be loud and unruly so somebody will come up there and say something to them and because they already have foreign the mentality and said to their friends, as soon as he come up here, man, watch this, watch this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to do that. Let him say something to me. I'm going to be his, be his ass jingle to my mom. You cannot do that to a person. All that is complete BS to me. And in this situation, I mean, and I'm just giving y'all some examples for those that always like to run it. People need to open their minds up and stop being so closed-minded and stop, you know, being so blind to what's going on in the world. So, to explain some of this further to you, or I want to give you all the um, other side of things. So, what I did was I interviewed a teacher, somebody professional that is in the field. And to protect this person's privacy, I will not be getting giving out any names any schools that they work at or anything like that because as y'all know people are harsh in the comments and i don't want anybody calling anybody getting any hate mail or being bothered or bombarded with no bs so i i'm not i want to keep this person anonymous and i said when i asked for this interview i did agree to keep the keep it anonymous and everything and i had just a series of questions that i wanted to ask you know, about the situation, just to be sure that I wasn't in the wrong for feeling the way that I feel about the situation that the, te the teacher was justified for what he did. So let's get into this interview. So uh, my first question is, what is your occupation? I am currently a science teacher. Okay. How many years have you been teaching? 
I've been teaching a total of 32 years. Oh, that is awful. So what all ages have you worked with? Kindergarten through 12th grade. Oh, so you've done, I didn't realize you had done all the ages. That is neat. Okay. Okay, so on the video that's in question, people have been saying stuff like the teacher shouldn't have done it, the teacher's in the wrong, um, the teacher should have practiced more restraint. What's your opinion? You have worked with kids, you know, and seen all kind of things. So what's your opinion? My opinion is that the viewers only saw a very short clip of probably what had been weeks and months of uh, problems with that student. The teacher has a duty to teach. The students are there to learn. And when you have a student or students who interfere with the education of other students, it not only reflects the students who are not learning, but it reflects badly on the teacher because at the end of the school year when students are tested, if that teacher has not followed and taught all of what they're supposed to teach, then it's a bad review on the teacher. So uh, an unruly student that a teacher has to deal with every day can make teaching undesirable for a lot of reasons. And it also prevents other students from benefiting from being at school. Okay. So... Like in the situation where teach, uh, parents are saying, well, I feel like I send my kids to school to be protected. And if I send my kids to school to be protected and the teacher acts like this, um, I, I, I don't even know if my kid's safe to go to school. I, how do you feel about those type of statements from parents? Because I don't think the kids are unsafe to go to school because I don't think there are teachers just going around jumping on students no i disagree with that totally the, the the parents who are saying they send their kids to school and expect for them to be safe safety is not only the responsibility of the teacher there there are also uh, safety issues from other students so a teacher is a professional just like all other professions but a teacher's role is always scrutinized at a different level than other professions. So if you take the title of teacher away from that individual and he simply is just standing his ground, what makes him any different from any other adult who feels threatened just because he's a teacher? I'll answer my own question. He is no different. A teacher is a human being just like everybody else, but they're always held to a different standard because they are teachers. And yes, we are supposed to be role models, and yes, we are supposed to um, be held, demonstrate uh, a high character, morals. But when you're faced with some of the students that come to school today who have no morals, who have no values, and who would say some of the things that that young man said to a teacher, is understandable why that teacher felt threatened and had that student um, overtaken that teacher, then none of the students would have been safe. So I think the safe thing to do is to remove the problem. And that's what the teacher did. And the teacher wasn't the problem. That unruly student was the problem. And I would like to challenge any parent who thinks that the teacher was wrong to go to school, sit in the classrooms, See what the teachers go through on a daily basis. Evaluate the behavior of some of these students and then come to a judgment on how a teacher should behave because they don't see the, the day in and the day out 
the disruption, the disrespect, all the role that a teacher has to, um, all the hat that a teacher has to wear and teach. Hmm. That was so well said. So let me ask you this. Who protects the teacher? When when students are running up on teachers like that and the teachers don't hit the students or don't protect themselves, then then who protects the teacher? Because there's nobody there but but other students. So what is a, st- a, a teacher supposed to do when a student is in their personal space, threatening them bodily harm, and you already have known like these students are either like in a gang or known to be um physical who protects that teacher well there really are no um local authority you would think that your immediate supervisor being your principal would be the person that would protect you after the principal you would think it would be your superintendent who would be there to protect you but every day a teacher practices saving the children very seldom is there a drill or a procedure in place to protect the teacher. Then you have your organizations, the National Education um, Association, and then you've got your local state organizations where a teacher can purchase insurance, liability insurance, in the event that you're sued. But that insurance does not protect your job. It only protects you if you're sued. So unless that particular school district has a plan in place that is practiced and monitored to the best of my knowledge there is no there are no procedures in place to protect a teacher who is being threatened by an unruly student there's one teacher the ratio one to 25 so that teacher basically is at the mercy of of those students and would pray and hope that all 25 don't turn and that there would be one responsible student in the classroom who would summon help in the event that that teacher was ever attacked. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's just, I mean, that, that's just makes it rough for a teacher. And that's why I don't fault him for, his actions because you are at the mercy of a room full of students and i mean for me i just feel like if he didn't act and react the way that he did like more students would attempt it either one jump in with him or either two at some point attempt the same thing that very well could have happened especially if they are in gang Mm -hmm. Um, a gang is considered two or more people. So if another student had joined in, that teacher would have been seriously at risk of being hurt. And with the teacher incapacitated, there's nobody in the room left to restore order. So you would have to hope that there would be at least one student who was responsible enough to go get help. Mm -hmm. But what people don't understand is if if you remove that title and say human, because that's what teachers are, that person would not be criticized nearly as harshly for just being a person who was standing their ground. And I don't understand how you can legally remove the right for a person to defend themselves just because they are a teacher, because they wear that title. If that had been a doctor, a lawyer, uh, a nurse, or a store clerk who took down the threat, they would be held a hero. But because that person wore the title of teacher, all of the, the measures that would be put in place for any other individual to protect themselves is removed from that person simply because that person wears the title of a teacher. And then you have all these parents being critical, saying the teacher should have held, should have known better, the teacher should have done this. But yet they can't, they can't cite one thing after seeing the video that they thought the teacher did wrong 
before it escalated to that point. That incident had been taking place for, for quite some time. And from what I could gather, the young man had said some horrible, personal, hurtful things to that individual. And any other person in that same situation would have reacted the same way. So just because a person is a teacher doesn't mean that they don't have feelings. It doesn't mean that they, they don't fear the teachers. It doesn't mean that they are not hurt. And it doesn't mean that they're not afraid. When people are afraid, that's when they act out. And I think the teacher was afraid for his safety. Yeah, I feel like after watching the full video that he should have been afraid for his safety. I mean, that that boy stepped to him like a man and like he was going to attack him. And I felt like it was either protect myself now or go down. And I mean, you in a, in a situation where you got to decide either is it my life? Or do I just stand here in front of all these other kids and die and then let him hurt, attack and hurt somebody else? So, I I mean, I personally applaud him because, I mean, I, I agree. It, this is something that had been escalating. It just didn't, they didn't just didn't get up to in, in the class, you know, a couple of days ago and decide he was going to act up. I, I agree with you. I feel like it's been an issue that's been building and he was justifiable in defending himself. I agree totally. This young man was in high school. I doubt seriously if behavior issues just started this year. So some of the questions that I didn't hear that we should have heard was, where has this child's parents been all of his life? And if he has parents in his life, what how much of this responsibility falls on the, on the parents for not teaching this young man how to behave in school, for not teaching the young man the value of an education? What role does the child's parents play in his behavior? Nobody questions the parents. It's always the teacher should have done this or the teacher should have done that. Why don't we ask the question, what did the parents do to foster this child's education? How much time have the parents put in to make sure this young man values education? Nobody asks those questions. So let's go take it back to birth. What is this child grown up looking at? What is this child grown up seeing? Children learn from home. So if he's displaying that, that behavior at school, somewhere... Somebody went wrong in not teaching this child what school is for. School is for learning. School is not for a child who is under the age of 18 to disrupt the entire flow of education simply because they have no respect for the institution of education. That child probably should have been removed from the system a long time ago and placed in an environment where he would be more successful, maybe an alternative school, somewhere with more structure. But clearly, public education is not the place for that type of behavior. So I'd like to see some of the responsibility put back on the child. Ask the question, why was that child being so disrespectful? And why didn't that child follow the commands or the request of the teacher. How many times had the teacher uh, asked this child to, or directed this child to go be seated um, or try to correct this child? The child clearly was not receiving, nor was he following any direction of the teacher. You can look at the child's body language. That was a defensive stand. He stood it squared to the teacher, the teacher's body language was saying, I don't want to fight you because he wasn't squared up to the child. But the child clearly was not going to concede and he was going to challenge this teacher in every way possible until it, it until somebody came out victorious. And in this situation, 
the teacher came out victorious. I applaud the teacher. Um, I applaud the other students for not joining in with this child in his deliberate attempt to disrupt the flow of education. But there are more people who need to uh, be held accountable for this, not just the teacher, but also the students and also the institution of learning. If this child had been a problem, problem previously, he should have been removed. Uh, you, you touched on so many things that I mentioned in my opinion on why I felt like this teacher's actions was justifiable, especially with um, the boy's actions starting because I feel like it started at home what you know how he was raised and I keep pushing up trying to push the fact to people that nowadays they children are not raised like they were in the 80s and in the 90s school is not the same as it was then and these children are raised differently or lack thereof I guess you could say because they're not getting the home training or the morals like you mentioned. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I was going to actually ask you, you know, your opinion about that. And I personally feel like, like you said, the parents need to be held accountable because I wanted to know where are the parents? What did the parents say? I feel like if your kid behaves like that in school, you know, they like to come pick up parents. When If your kid misses X amount of days, they like to arrest parents. Then I feel like if your child behaves like that in school and attacks a teacher, then a parent needs to be arrested because somebody is not doing something somewhere. You have to teach your kids how to act and how to behave. I totally agree. And that child needs... Teacher has... I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. That child needs to... Uh, somebody needs to be held accountable for some of this to stop. Because this has been going on... You know, this is not the first incident. I mean, it was a big thing about another female teacher who hit um, a female student not too long ago. Well, it was last year, I think, sometime. You know, and I just think it has gotten kind of out of control unless they start doing more to hold... Um, these children accountable, I think it's going to get worse. It is. And and these people who criticize the teacher need to ask themselves, how many professions out there can you name where it's okay to go in and attack somebody and not be, um, and the person not fight back? Or let me rephrase that. How many jobs can you name where somebody can go in and attack a person, attack a person who is at work and nothing happens to them. And like I said, just because that person is a teacher does not mean that person doesn't have feelings. It doesn't mean that person is not fearful for their life. Teachers have so many, 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 many things that they have to deal with. And having to defend themselves and fight a student it's just too much. So, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know because this subject is like so in depth that it's just like so much running through my mind at one time. Like, I have questions that I had written down to ask you, but as we talk, I just like keep seeing so many things that need to be addressed because I have so many people that kids are small and they're kind of in a bubble and don't kind of comprehend exactly what's going on in some of these schools and classrooms. And so my train of thought kind of slips, slips away to like, you know, other questions. So um, yeah, it's, such, it's such a broad subject. You know, you have to think about so many things that probably took place before it escalated. And as a, a teacher, the thing that, that gets me the most is the amount of power and the amount of influence that a teacher has over a child is tremendous. Starting from preschool, a teacher has an opportunity to set the stage for a wonderful educational opportunity. A teacher can make a child love school or a teacher can make a child hate school. If a teacher truly loves what they do, and most of them do, 
They love getting up every day going to work. They love being able to touch lives in a positive way. If they didn't love what they do, they certainly wouldn't go in every day and have to be criticized by the entire world for making a mistake. And sometimes things we do, um, we do so much that we don't get credit for. That's so important in the um, the early stages of development for children. So somewhere, for some reason, this child didn't get it. He was missed. And by the time he got to high school, I would think that with all the mental illness going on, that it's possible that this child may be a victim that just was missed or for whatever reason it wasn't dealt with. Because most children that I've encountered don't act like him. The ones who are truly there to learn, those children don't act that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, was this child mentally ill? Was this child diagnosed with something? If he wasn't, then what was the problem for this child? The teacher didn't have a problem. The child had a problem. And so why didn't somebody somewhere reach in, step in, and try to do something before this child got that much out of control. And then somebody may have stepped in and tried to um, see what was going on with this child, why education wasn't at the forefront of his, his plans every day. But whatever the reason, it got to that point. So we need to step back probably 12 years. Let's look at 12 years. How did he get to that point? And I say, hold everybody accountable, not just the teacher, because that child came there with that problem. The teacher didn't create that problem. The teacher was just having to deal with it. And teachers aren't really trained to deal with mentally ill people. Teachers aren't trained to de-escalate gang activity. I mean, there's so many different things that could have happened and all we saw was just one little piece. So unless I and unless all those other people can get in there and break down the situation and try to figure out how it got to that point, all of us are just speculating, you know, saying what we think should have happened. Exactly. Or, or what could have happened or what should have happened. But unless you've been in a classroom, unless you've been in a situation like that, when you're standing eye to eye to a person who is so out of control that you don't know what the next move is going to be, it's kind of hard to, to say, well, the teacher should have done this. Put yourself in that teacher's shoes. Ask yourself, what would I have done if this man or if this young person was standing there to all cussing me? Um, just, just non-stop in front of a whole classroom full of students. Mm -hmm. What, what would anybody else have done in that situation? That's what I'd like to know. What would you have done? If that had been you, what would you have done in that situ in that same situation? So let me ask you this. Okay, so um, th these questions come from what things that the children in the room witnessed and what they said. So um, if... Okay, so they said basically what happened here. They said the the boy got in trouble for a dress code violation, whether it's pants sagging, the wrong words on a shirt. A lot of us who like, for instance, kids here you can't wear WWE wrestling t shirts. You know stuff with smoking, just whatever the dress code was, and that's what set the boy off. The teacher didn't talk to him ugly. He didn't say it in no negative way. He didn't say it in 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 you know, anything bad. He just was like, it's dress code violation. Uh, whatever the child's name is, whether you send it, I think he either sent him to the office, whatever their procedure is for dress code violation, whether he has to write him up or whether he sends him to the office. The little boy went off and gets to acting a fool, right? So what is the procedure for like getting these kids? Okay. So if you send a child to the office and they refuse to go, 
I mean, what what's your next step? What can you do if you try to put them out of your classroom and they don't go and they continue to talk vulgar and say racial slurs? Is there anything else you can do to get them out of the room? Mm, uh, well, the school should have had a procedure in place to deal with the different levels of disobedience. You know, if it's a minor distraction and the child will comply, then you document it on whatever procedures they have. You send it to the office and then it, when the principal or assistant principal, when they get the paperwork, they'll come and get the student and deal with the situation. But when one is that out of control, the teacher is in charge of um, enforcing the dress code violation. So if the child refused to leave the room, then I probably would have summoned for help when I saw that the child was not going to, to listen and was not in the mental state of mind to accept the consequences of whatever is going to the office, then I probably would have either gone to the phone, I don't even know if they had phones in the classroom, but gone to the phone and called for an administrator to come deal with that level of disrespect. So there are procedures in place. Mm. So is it like, um, I don't know how to say, how to word this, like, um, say like if a student is known to always be disrupted, is it, you know, uncommon for, for, for a teacher just to be like, okay, he, he's, be, he this this student he he's always like this. I got a sign for a dress code violation. He's gonna get mad and kind of act out. So is it possible that a teacher may not summon like the office if they're used to a student occasionally acting out or being disruptive, but they may you know be able to carry on with class and kind of ignore it. Does that is that yeah. Yes, I mean, the teacher was, was doing everything in his power to try to get the child to comply. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe the, the teacher thought that after enough asking that the student would go ahead and comply, order would be restored, and they could go ahead and have class. Mm -hmm. So without knowing exactly what the situation was, not knowing if it was a repeat offender, or if this child was, you know, we don't know what happened at home before the child got to school. Mm. There's so many different things that um, would have to be considered. But I do know that every school has to have a handbook. Mm -hmm. Every student gets a copy of their handbook. Every student is made well aware of what the procedures are. So by it being November, um, the student, it wasn't the first day of school, so the student knew what was expected. So if the student was not compliant, the student probably, but this is just my opinion, based on experience, if the child willfully broke the, the dress code, was in violation, and refused to comply, that student came there with a purpose. And he, he, his purpose was to disrupt. Otherwise, he would have dressed, been compliant, came to school, ready to learn. So what was this child's ulterior motive? You know, why did he even enter the doors out of dress code? I'm Clearly, he wasn't there to be compliant. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I didn't even think about that on that level. See, that's a whole different level for me because... I didn't even think about that, you know, at that point. You're right. I mean, we, we late in the school year is halfway over. So if it's going to be halfway over now because we coming up on Thanksgiving. So, I mean, I, I mean, that just blew, took me for a loop because that is so correct. He, you know, at this point, you know the dress code and you know, you know, the violations and what not to do. But he came in there, like you said. And apparently, if you've been dressing right all year, or whatever, what made it be an issue today? Uh -huh. Because 
you in an area where they have charity boxes, help boxes for school uniforms, because I've already looked this up. So I know that there's plenty of charity in Goodwill or whatever in that area that can help, you know, I call them clothing. Um, how you call it? Like those clothing bikes. Oh, Thank you. That's it. So, because that's what I, that's the first thing I said. Okay. So, did he not have the dress code? So, he had places to get the clothes. So, that wasn't an issue. So, I'm so glad you mentioned that, though. That, I mean, that was awesome. So, I have one last question for you. I know you had a long day. And I have appreciated this interview so much from a professional. But my last question is, have you had any experiences um, where you've had a student try to be combative with you or get physical with you any kind of way or like threaten you bodily harm? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Most of the occurrences came from children who were diagnosed or not diagnosed with some kind of mental disability. And for those children, sometimes when they're not diagnosed or not being treated, it's hard for anybody to reach those kids. But yes, I've been attacked, I've been kicked, I've been bitten, I've been Kids have spit on me, but these children were not rational children. As far as the high school level, I have been verbally abused by children, but not physically attacked by any children. And it could be because I'm a female, and it could be because maybe the children were not as combative as this young man but in those situations when I did feel that I was going to be attacked and I had tried all the tactics and followed the policy to the letter I would always get to the phone and there's a code mm -hmm. and I would call the office and we had a, a school resource officer who was on campus and so my experience and my demeanor, being a woman and a motherly figure, would always try to de-escalate after the threat and then immediately call for help. Thank you for that answer. In my opinion, I think even once you call for help, you still got a time frame your help has to get there. And I still feel like if a teacher is threatened with bodily harm, and this is my opinion only, if a teacher is threatened with bodily harm, and even though her help is on the way, that may be three minutes down the hall. If that student comes for me then, or that student goes for that teacher, I feel like that that teacher should protect themselves. If that student's in there, just like in this situation, that boy said something really, really ugly. He had, to me, bowed up on this teacher. He is in this teacher's personal space. We we talk, you know, and he hollered. He said, whatever, ugly stuff, and hollered. Now, what, my nigga, ready to swing. And I feel like when, before your help gets there, if you have to choose whether to defend yourself or take a butt whooping from a student, I still think a teacher should defend themselves by all means. I agree. And and what that young man just did, those words meant, if you don't get me, I'm, I'm going to hit get you. you. Those were fighting words, and that he, he was ready to swing, and it was one or two things. Either I'm going to hit you, or you're going to have to fight. And I think uh -huh. that he, he did right. And a lot of people that are judging that teacher just don't realize that. And to me, it's one of those situations, I guess, unless they're in it, they're not going to comprehend it. Just, not. And that teacher knew that student, and that teacher knew what was coming. Exactly. Exactly. He knew, and that's why he defended himself. And I thank God that he lived through it, and he was able to go home after work and and be with his family. And that's all anybody else wants is to go to work, be productive, and go home to your family. 
And so if others can't understand that teachers are humans just like them, then, you know, I don't know what to say, except you go and you spend eight hours in that school and witness what teachers have to deal with on top of educating the children, and you will walk away with a different opinion and with a better understanding of what a difficult job being an educator is because most people have no idea. But on the same, at the same time, it's a rewarding career. And it's a shame that a teacher would lose their job over something like that. You know, that's, that's just the sad part of it, because I'm sure he was a good teacher. And I'm sure he loved what he did. Well, and it's unfortunate. Excuse me, I'm sorry. And according to the students, the... I, Apparently, he was a good teacher. That's why it was a GoFundMe started because they said that he was a good teacher. That I think they said he'd been there. Seven, the students said he'd been there seven years. He was a good teacher, and that he didn't deserve the treatment he got. And that's why the parents and students have started the GoFundMe because they said they didn't deserve it because they did charge him with child abuse. But um, and that those parents didn't agree because the students in the situation said apparently this boy like is kind of like what you have explained someone that has somewhat been a problem or you know he's known to behave the way he behaved so um the teacher was very justifiable in the situation and according to them he did he does not deserve to lose his job he did not deserve to be sent to jail and he did not deserve to be charged with child abuse based on everything that happened in that classroom. So we know based off the children, off the students, off the parents, off the school system, the administrators, other teachers, that he was a good teacher. He was a good person. He didn't have any other issues. There's no issues of him. There's no students saying, oh, but this teacher, he normally gets smart. It was none of that. He was not one of those kind of teachers um, or anything. So... I hope that your dialogue and your conversation will um, continue with your online listeners because there is a conversation that needs to be had, especially when children are attacking, school shootings are increasing every day because we're dealing with a generation of children who, for whatever reason, lack the mental capacity and the morals to value another person's life. And they're taking the lives of children, taking the lives of teachers. Mm. So the conversation needs to be had. Mentally, it, mental illness is real. It doesn't happen overnight. And there needs to be a system in place to help um to, to treat these children before it escalates to the point to where somebody is hurt and losing their jobs. Amen. I so agree. Well, well, I, well I hope that helps. I thank you so much for this interview. And I th I'm sure my listeners have enjoyed it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I hope there was something that was said that can, can help yeah, somebody. I, to say, I think that was a great interview. I think that touched on some, some of the things that were covered is some things that I didn't even, I mean, think to ask a question anyway, about. Especially. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Be sure to like, comment, and share. And be sure, be sure you hit that notification bell. And I will see y'all later. Y'all are free to leave a comment below. There will be no disrespect in the comments. No fighting and no arguing. And no dragging anybody in the comments. And I appreciate everybody's opinion. And I appreciate y'all for watching and coming by. Thank you guys. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Hugs and kisses and lots of love always. Your girl, Nick.